One of the chapters in the book is called Pantsuits Are Not Enough. Yes. In that chapter, I really try to unpack why it is that this sort of liberal feminism, lean-in feminism, girl boss feminism, whatever you want to call it, the socialists used to call it bourgeois feminism back in the late 19th century, it, that sort of strand of feminism was always about getting women, things like voting rights through the suffragettes, um, getting women, married women, uh, property rights, allowing women access to higher education and allowing women access to previously uh, male professions. Mm. And so that version of women's activism was always really about privileged women. It was always really about the daughters of those with property, the daughter, the wealthy daughters being really angry that when they got married, all of their money was, all of their wealth was immediately transferred to the pockets of their husbands who could spend it at will as many of them did. And there were, you know, all of these rules, you know, excluding women from obviously voting, but also excluding women from professions, no matter how talented they were. And I think it's really important to understand that when we look at the history of women's activism in the late 19th century, and we go back to somebody like Flora Tristan, who was writing in like 1838, 1840, her final book is 1843, what you see is that there was this whole other strand of feminism, which was really about understanding that working women, that peasant women, that ordinary women needed to build a coalition with men, with workers from the bottom up and really kind of transform society together rather than just imagining that having some elite role models, like having a female president or a female CEO or some, you know, girl boss sort of thing, that 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 um, top down, kind of trickle down idea of like, well, if we just have a few women in power, they're gonna make us, all, it's gonna be good for all of us. It's not, right? What it means is it's good for them. And it's right. always been good for them and it's right. not good for ordinary women. And so I think that when we go back and we really understand the, the longer history and trajectory of what is called socialist feminism, clearly it was a much more inclusive and broad-based movement. Now, it has its problems. I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. There are things about it. Some people say that it can be very essentializing. It tends to overemphasize women's roles as mothers and caregivers. But that at the end of the day, um, whether you agree with women's roles you know, being defined by motherhood or not, a lot of women are mothers and a lot of women are caregivers. And at least this model is not just focused on uh, getting a few women ahead at the top. It's about creating a society which is much more just and equitable and sustainable for everybody, not just for a few elite women at the top. And I think that's really important.